Look, bad cops are all around us, and some think their uniform allows them to do whatever they want. Today, we're talking about police officers who harassed people based on racial profiling, and some of them even got arrested. So let's go to the videos. These cops pulled over a guy and his girlfriend while they were in a parking lot because they were of a different skin color than the cops. The guy had a gun in the car, but it was registered to him and he had a permit to carry it. He openly displayed his permit for everyone to see. However, the police decided to pull him out of the car and arrest him, claiming he perfectly matched the description of someone wanted for homicide. But of course, when the girlfriend asked for a picture of the person they were looking for, she was shocked to see that her boyfriend not only didn't resemble the suspect at all, but looked entirely different. Despite this, the cops continued to push their false narrative. Instead of apologizing, they persisted and even pretended they had arrested the real suspect. When the girlfriend wanted to take a photo of the actual suspect, the cops wouldn't allow her to. Uh, he, they pulled him out of the car. They pulled him out of the car and put handcuffs on him because they said he fits the description of a homicide suspect. This one showed me the, the picture, which looks nothing like him. And when I asked to take a picture of the picture that he showed, he won't show me. The picture looks nothing like him. Yeah, I want, I want, I want to take a, a picture of the picture. Not a picture of my screen. Why not? I'm telling you that right now. Yeah. He won't let me take a picture of his screen, which is supposed to fit the description. Yeah. Please tell me why. Please tell me why. Uh huh. But you guys, you, you guys, uh, unless, unless you think all black people look alike, you guys know that that is not him in that picture. That, and that's the only way. Yeah, y'all know it's not him. And the, you, not, just, run, just run the gun. Just, just run the gun. If that's all, just run it because we're legal. It's very fine. We're, we're, everything is legal. We have insurance on the car. The gun is registered to him. Good. That is, it, it is a big of a deal because if you were sitting yeah, in your car minding your own business and cops just came and dragged you out of your car and put you in handcuffs and said that you fit the description, you would be very upset too. You didn't drag him out the car? So this is not him out of his own vehicle in handcuffs because he fits the description? Why? Why, why did you take him out of the car? The girlfriend pointed out that the person in the picture had black skin also, but it was much lighter than her boyfriend's. Additionally, the true suspect wore a red suit and was beardless, while her boyfriend was dressed in gray and had a beard. It was evident to both her and her boyfriend that this was a clear case of racial profiling. It turns out that the guy and his girlfriend had stopped in the parking lot to buy something from the store, and while the girl was out of the car, her boyfriend decided to wait for her. The cop spotted him, watched him the whole time, and then decided to pin the blame on him simply based on the color of his skin, assuming he's the murderer they're after. This is a description of a homicide detective, and let me tell y'all, they will not let me show the picture because y'all know very well he does not look like him. All it is is a black dude with red dress. They're not even the same skin color. Solo is darker skin, has a freaking dark beard. Like, this is ridiculous. This is, this is, this is, this is racial profiling is exactly what it is. This is racial profiling. It is. It is. No, let him run it. Let him run it. Yeah, yeah, just run. Just, just run the gun. Another thing that upset the cops was the red hair of the arrested guy. These cops were so prejudiced that they assumed he was involved in illegal activities based on his appearance. They behaved poorly, oblivious to the fact that they were constantly violating the rights of both individuals. Then, one of the police officers requested gloves from his colleague. What the guy and his girlfriend didn't know at the time was that the officer intended to search their car without a search warrant. These cops seemingly believed they were above the law and could act however they wanted. The confusion caused by the arrest of this guy only fueled their arrogance. Perhaps if the guy had asserted his rights, at worst he would have been arrested as he was anyway. However, there could have been a chance to put the cops back in their place. Here, and, and with some red dress and decided, you know what, let's, let's pull him out the car. I feel you're going to have to change your hair color because this is, you're going to have to change your hair color because this is, this is, this is too much. Are y'all running the gun? Listen, we're going to handle this how we're going to handle it. You're not dictating this. You're you guys are violating this. our civil rights. You very much are. You you very much are. What law is this that you can take someone out of their car because they fit the description and arrest them? All you guys had to do was run his name. You run his name, right? He did. So what's... What do you need gloves for? Oh, I thought he was fixing to search you, and I was going to ask why you were going to search his person if he's not under arrest. Wow. 
still look like a piss man cop off the internet. It really does. Fortunately, his girlfriend stepped up to defend their rights as much as she could. She wanted to ensure she recorded everything to showcase how poorly the cops were treating them and how they were escalating the situation despite being there to de-escalate it. The officer who illegally searched their car seized a gun, and honestly, he didn't handle it well. He acted as if he had never held a gun before. Then he took another unauthorized step, confiscating the guy's gun for no valid reason and placing it in their police car. Oh my God, if, if you don't know how to handle it. Why are you putting it in your car? Wait, why are you putting yeah, it in there? Let him do a thing, just so we can get this shit away. No, I just want to make sure everything is handled the way it's supposed to be. Why are you putting it in your vehicle? And then the girl remembered something shocking. She recognized one of the cops. She claimed that he had already stopped and harassed them in the past based on their skin color. Of course, he pretended he had no idea what she was talking about. She ironically remarked that he must have mistreated so many people with different skin colors in his career that he couldn't even remember them. The girl then turned the camera towards another cop who was holding her boyfriend tightly as if he might try to escape. The cop seemed to forget that the guy was handcuffed and certainly wasn't going anywhere. You look familiar. That one looks that looks familiar. He looks like the one that came up to us outside of Kroger that time. I don't work on this side of town, so. We don't live on this side of town either. I'm talking about the other side of town. I think he was with a group of cops who came up to us when he had his AR with him. Probably, you guys just harass so many black people you can't remember. Why are you holding him? And are you scared he's gonna run or what? In handcuffs? <laughs> In case he falls down. The girl highlighted another crucial point while recording. She pointed out that the cops don't know how to do their job properly, considering they approached her so closely from behind that she felt threatened. Police officers should be aware that while armed, they must maintain a distance of at least six feet from any citizen unarmed, especially a girl with only a camera. These cops were itching to escalate the situation further, but they couldn't because they met the wrong person. This girl made sure not to miss anything with her camera, recording all the cops at all times. Now that's how you defend your rights. How embarrassing, bro. That, that's, that's a shame. You, I told you we need to tint the windows. You can't even sit in your car and be black, bro. Dang, so you can be detained and harassed and pulled out of your car and held up for a crime, but you can't be told what the crime is. It's, it's, uh, when did the homicide happen? Yeah, I bet, bet, I bet. A cop spotted a man at the gas station and decided to approach him. Not only was he not allowed to approach him on private property, but he was not also permitted to block him with his police car and restrict his freedom of movement in public. Can you take a wild guess why this cop chose to harass this man? Upon seeing that the man had a different skin color than him, the cop claimed that a man across the street was worried about this man and had called the cops to check on him. When the man asked him what exactly the person was worried about, the cop said he saw him pumping gas into a car with a woman. However, there wasn't a single woman with the man, making it clear that the cop fabricated the entire story. For the cop, this was merely an intro to ask the man for his ID without any valid reason. Frickin' hall monitors. However, what the cop didn't know was that this man knew how to defend his rights and didn't appreciate being blocked by a police car. I'm simply coming to talk to you. About what? There's a guy across the street. Said he what? He was concerned about you at the gas station. Why was he concerned about me? Because he said that you pulled in. And did what? For some ladies. 
Yeah, I'm sitting out in the car. He said some ladies. There wasn't nothing but some ladies in here. You got the wrong person. Yes. There's no ladies in here. Okay. Is that necessary? Yes, it is, because it's this necessary. You parting in front of me. I'm sitting out here in the bro. Man, you can't do this, bro. I'm not doing nothing, bro. I didn't do nothing. You on camera. I'm sitting out here in the car. Yeah, but it's necessary. You parting in front of me. I'm sitting out here in the car. Yeah, but it's necessary. You parting in front of me. I'm sitting out here in the car. Yeah, but it's necessary. You parting in front of me. Now you're being hostile. No, I'm not. I'm not being hostile, bro. You on yeah. camera, bro. You on, man. You on camera. No, no, cause you stop. You cannot do this to. You cannot stop in front of me like that. You, you, you blocking me in here, bro. You cannot do that. That's not. I'm not doing. I'm not committing a crime. You cannot block me in here. That's not. I can get upset for that, bro. Yeah, but you block. No, you still here, bro. There's no point. No, yes it is, cause I gotta go somewhere and you blocking me in there. What, 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 what did you just say I did? I didn't say you did. Okay then, I haven't done nothing, you but don't need to block me here. Right. No bro, no bro, I can get mad cause you blocking me in here bro. You can't do that. You don't have a reason man, it's no reason. You just said it. You cannot do that bro. The cop persisted in fabricating stories and inventing new reasons for approaching the man. The unfortunate reality for this cop was that he had no legitimate grounds to approach the man and request his ID. In particular, he had no right to block him. Wearing a uniform doesn't grant him the authority to create new laws. Instead, he should adhere to existing ones. That's why it's called law enforcement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, everything's straight. He just came out here, I haven't done anything, blocked me in, bro. Nothing. I'm not, I'm not doing nothing, bro. I, he don't supposed to block me in here, bro. We are civilians, bro. You block me in here. You a civilian too. That's illegal, bro. You, if I come block him in there, they gonna get pissed. They gonna get pissed, bro. What's the problem? Why you doing this? Okay, well, That's all it. you gotta do is say that. No, I ain't gotta say nothing, you bro. I ain't gotta say nothing. You just block me in, bro. Leave me alone, bro. Leave me alone, man. Leave me alone. Ain't no guy across the street said nothing. Guy across the street said I had girls in here. There's not even no girls in here, bro. What you talking about, bro? You got the wrong information from that guy. False report. Go get him. I ain't done nothing. So, basically, ain't no basement, bro. Elderly guy called, said that they pulled up at the gas station, pumped gas, they drove off, and they came back to the gas station, pumped more gas within about five minutes, and he said that they pulled over here. Hey, get step back in the Bro, no, we looking at you, bro. It's all on you, bro. When the man inquired about the reason for the officer's actions, it appeared that the officer struggled to articulate a valid explanation, opting for silence. Unable to provide a more thoughtful response, the cop declared that the man was now detained and must furnish an ID, otherwise he would face charges of obstructing the police. If this officer were genuinely performing his duties responsibly, he would be aware that obstructing the police is a secondary offense, and an individual cannot be arrested solely for that. However, such expectations may be too high for a cop who cannot articulate why he approached a man who had committed no offense. The officer then attempted to redirect the narrative, asserting that the man was now part Part of an ongoing investigation, but of course. Naturally, the cop struggled to respond to further inquiries about the alleged investigation, as he seemed unprepared to provide any relevant details. What did I do? What have I done? While I'm here. What have I done wrong? I haven't said you've done anything wrong. Am I being detained? Wait, 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 wait. wait. Right now, wait, yes. Wait. You, were you detaining me? Yes. That's illegal, bro. Hey, I haven't done nothing for you to detain me, bro. Hey, hey, oh, that's illegal, bro. You gonna detain me? Let me just ask him. Let me just ask him. No, not right now. What's the investigation about? Why you? What's the investigation about? Because of his behavior. Bro, you 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 blocking me in, man? Nah, bro. No, bro. It's not no behavior. My behavior. He blocking me in here, and they's blocking me in here for nothing. Zaspi's parking lot in a public place. He come back up. My behavior, if I block anybody in here, this is going to be the same behavior. Go block him in. Go let me block someone else in. You can't block nobody in here for nothing. I can, bro, listen. Oh, bro. You already know, man. You got chill, man. Bro, this is like, this is white people, bro. This is their area. We're not supposed to be a few moments later, several additional police cars converged around the man's vehicle. All the cops disembarked and formed a circle in front of him, creating an intimidating presence. Do police officers really get so offended when someone doesn't follow their orders to a T that they require such a sizable backup? Bunch of chickens.
Their collective response seemed rather disproportionate, treating the situation as if the man had committed a severe offense rather than simply asserting his rights. Did nothing. Look at all these cops. Everybody's saying, chill, be cool. But like, it's gonna happen all the time. It's gonna happen to me all the time, bro. Yeah. Every time. Oh, yo, it's just like, this happened to me all the time, bro. First time I see you. Oh, no, no, trust me, bro. No, no, no. It happened to me all the time, man. Yeah. And the first time you see anyone here, it happened all the time, bro. Like, what? So, when can we eat? You gotta go through this? You just sit here and investigate me for what? Nigga, you black. It's called County, bro. I told you, nigga. Let's go. You did nothing, bro. Nigga, you black, bro. Why these folks around here pay for For police, you know. One of the cops who arrived as backup approached the man, reiterating the threat that he would be taken to jail unless he provided his ID. The man then requested a supervisor, and coincidentally, one had also come as backup. However, this sergeant proved to be even more problematic than his subordinates, leaving little doubt as to who set the tone for their behavior. The sergeant pathetically justified the demand for the man's ID by citing a call they received about his supposedly suspicious behavior at the gas station. Since the sergeant wasn't there when they first met up with this guy, there was a lack of coordination in the narrative, making the situation appear even more absurd. After all, what is so suspicious about a man gassing up? Of everything, bro. And this on camera at the BP, I had no girls at the car. They, oh, every man gave the wrong description. Just because of what, I got gassed twice? It's on camera, bro. What you said, bro? He's an SMA ID, bro. I'm not even That's right, bro. I did nothing, bro. Hey, check my tag, nigga. I'm gonna I did nothing, bro. You gonna try to come in with the man. Okay, so. Hey, bro, you can still, you can look right in the car, ain't in here, man. Okay, no, what? I'm putting some water in you. What? what? Hey, what? Like, one more time. I'm gonna ask you your ID. You're not gonna intimidate me. And then if you. Refuse? One more time, you're best going to jail. For I'm what? Jail if not have ID for why is that obstruction? Why is that? No, no, no. Where's no? Where's I need? I need the supervisor here. Come here. No, no. Come here, cause no, no. Come here. You have to come here. I'm asking you to come here. That is not obstruction, cause I had I did nothing to get pulled over for. That is not obstruction. That's not. What is this investigation about? Pumping gas? That is not instruction. You're not gonna yell at what is your name, sir? You're not gonna yell at what is your I'm name? Gonna, My name is Sergeant Casey. Okay. C A S O N. There's gotta be someone above you if you don't know what I'm talking about, bro. I did nothing. Listen to me. Stop yelling. We're gonna stop yelling at each other. Okay? We were called because somebody said that you were at the gas station. And sometimes it's suspicious. Wow, is pumping gas? Pumping gas is suspicious activity? But cops wouldn't be cops if they didn't feel the need to assert their authority at all costs. Consequently, they arrested the passenger who hadn't even interacted with them. Someone should urgently educate these cops that when they stop someone, they should only engage with the driver and not the other occupants of the vehicle. After all, it's not even logical to arrest him. Wasn't the driver the one they allegedly approached in the beginning? Wait, no, hell no, bro, you're locking my brother up for what? Man, no, bro. No, no, I gotta refute. Lo, he's locking my brother up. And he's sitting in his car? Bro, he can't lock me up. I ain't do nothing. Bro, what? He's in the passenger seat. What is, no, no, what are you guys doing? I need to see someone above you guys. No, I need to see someone above you. You cannot lock him up. You, no, if you lock my brother, I have to refuse everything. You cannot lock him up. No, he's not obstructing anything. He's a passenger. He's a passenger. He's a passenger. He doesn't have any of that. He doesn't have to say anything. He does, you don't have to talk to a passenger at Wazza Truck. You do not have to talk to a passenger. No. No. Can you imagine cops who are so convinced they can do whatever they want and give themselves the right to arrest a teenager who has done nothing? That's precisely what happened to this young guy who went outside his house to take out the trash when the cops just arrested him for no reason. The boy's father came to see what was going on and why they put his son in handcuffs. The cops explained how he fit the description of someone they were looking for. Right, classic cop reasoning. The father was shocked. He shook his head because he couldn't believe that someone had arrested his son for no reason when he had only gone to take out the trash. He explained to the cops that his son was a responsible teenager and had never done anything wrong. He also ironically thanked the cops because his son would lose his confidence due to someone humiliating him in front of his own home and arresting him. Do you think the cops were shaken at all by this? Of course not. They have no shred of dignity. His dad's coming out to see why they have put their, his son in handcuffs.
Bottom line. 